Hello everybody, this is Caroline Giate Edwards from Fortuna Admissions. I'm a director at Fortuna and I'm here today with my colleague Willie Kotas, who was a director at Kellogg. Um, so Willie graduated with his MBA from Kellogg and has 27 years of admissions experience and um, worked at the school for, for three of those years. Um, so Willie, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I know, Willie, that you've got a lot of experience in particular with executive MBA program. Um, so I wanted to ask you about that. Um, first of all, could you outline, you know, what do you see as the key differences between a regular MBA program, a full-time program, and an executive MBA program? Uh, sure, executive MBAs, or, or oftentimes we just, uh, the industry slang can be to call them an EMBA, MBA programs are really excellent for, for candidates who have at least eight years and oftentimes more than that, but <clears throat> usually there'll be people that are in their, in their 30s that uh, are very uh, happy with their current jobs and aren't looking to make a, a major pivot in their life, but uh, have, have reached kind of a point at their employers where the, the, they've reached their, their glass ceiling career-wise and an MBA would give them an extra push uh, to go higher up in the organizational chart. So they're, they're really wonderful programs for people who want to continue to work, that don't want to lose the, the, their uh, current income and have that opportunity cost of, of uh, not earning for two years. And also um, they give uh, the, the, the MBA students have the opportunity Number one, to have uh, generally, they'll take advantage of the best faculty at the university programs that are studying in because uh, the professors who are assigned to teach EMBA students, given the fact that they have many more years of experience than a normal full-time MBA student, are also the ones that teach a lot of uh, executive education courses. And they're generally the most senior, most experienced professors that the universities can offer. So I, I think academically, you, you'll get a better education if you're in, this, in the, the bucket of students that qualify for an MBA. You'll also be um, interfacing, uh, networking with um, people closer to your own age that are also higher up in the org chart. So there are people that are already made it in general to a managerial or a director level position. The, uh, another advantage is um, the the, the fact that um, you spend uh, in most programs, you'll be um, together for either weeks or weekends at a time, usually staying in the same facility, generally a hotel, mm -hmm. or it could be on campus. Mm -hmm. so, so you really have a 24-hour experience with the same group of students. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, uh, another advantage to enrolling in an MBAP program is that you're able to implement things that you learn say uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Monday morning at the office. Hmm. So, so you don't have to wait until your summer job or finishing a program to actually take advantage of what you've learned during the program. So, so I, th <clears throat> I think for people who um, are, are, aren't looking for the full MBA experience with a lot of ski trips, weekend travel, uh, thank God it's Friday parties, but aren't looking so much for the social aspect, but are actually looking for the knowledge. They'll get it through this program, and oftentimes their employer will be happy to subsidize either part or the full cost of, of, of an EMBA program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then how should someone who thinks that, you know, the, the EMBA is the right format for them, it's the right time in their career, um, how do they go about actually choosing a program? Because there are quite a few options available, um, both in the U.S. and internationally. Um, so what are the sort of key criteria that they should be looking at? Well, I, I think one, one thing that the, they, they should be screening the programs according to the format, because there, there are programs that require you to be on campus every, uh, every second weekend, almost uh, throughout two years. So uh, uh, that kind of program generally will be for people that live in the same city or the same region, where other programs really have a format of maybe one, one long weekend a month, or um, 
or um, a block of time set away, say two weeks every every few months. So really, which one will fit into your work schedule better? I think is one criteria. You're also going to want to look at at what uh, what um, alumni and what kind of alumni network uh, these programs have in the region of interest. I, I think that's also very important. One of the benefits of um, of working with uh, MBA admissions is that, that many uh, a, a much smaller group of people apply to each um, each executive MBA program. So mm -hmm. well, you, you might have thousands of applicants to uh, the full time program, say say at Kellogg for an executive MBA. You can have more more like dozens. So the, the, the staff is able to, to allocate time to you before you apply to do review your resume, to get a, hop on a call with you and tell you if uh, you think, they think you are a qualified candidate or, you, or what you're lacking before you apply, something mm -hmm. that you wouldn't get from um, full-time admission staff. Yeah, 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 that's great. And you mentioned that, um, you know, in general, the EMBA is a great format for somebody who's looking to accelerate their career. Um, so would you say that it's really not possible to, to make a career change through um, an EMBA program? Well, people, people do. The, the one, I think one of the major differences between a full-time and um, an EMBA is that the full-time programs are really set up um, as conveyor belts in, in, as far as the, the recruiting process goes. Uh, companies, consulting firms, uh, private equity firms are all coming to campus recruiting uh, for talent. Where executive MBA programs, as they tend to be much, much smaller, the, the cohorts, uh, you really don't, and, and the majority of the students aren't looking to change job employers, you don't have that kind of re recruiting, um, active recruiting. So really much more of it falls on the individual candidate to take advantage of the alumni network, take advantage of the fact that he's traveling, he or she is traveling to a different city and may set up interviews um, on their own. Uh, with the support of, of the, the placement office at the particular university, but I think it's, it's, it's a much different ball game uh, for, for executive MBA students. Right, you have to be more proactive, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Willie, for sharing your insights on the EMBA. And thank you to our audience for joining us today. If you would like to discuss your profile with Fortuna and discuss um, perhaps an EMBA program and whether it's the right fit for you, we'd be delighted to discuss that. Um, please contact us um, through our website, www.fortunaadmissions.com. Thank you.